Hello, everybody, and welcome to our session today on data as a product and why now is the time to think differently about data. I'm Carl Hampson, Chief Technology Officer and Practice Lead for Data and AI here at Ken and Carter Europe. I've been working in data for 32 years, starting my career with Oracle, working on very large transactional systems, and then a, a data journey through early applied AI, unstructured data, and now focusing more broadly on enterprise data transformation. Rob? Hi, I'm Rob Wadsworth. I joined Kin and Carter recently as Director of Enterprise Data. Um, I have a career in building big bespoke enterprise products across healthcare media. And more recently, I've spent the last five years leading the technology and digital transformation for Data Art Co-op. That's across all of its businesses, its retail, funeral care and insurance business. And here's what we'll be talking about today. First of all, every business needs to become a data business. So we'll start with a very quick walkthrough of our model for what a modern data business looks like at a very high level. We'll talk about why we believe now is the time to rethink the approach to data. Rob will then start to unpack the big themes around data as a product. We'll share with you some takeaways from this session uh, that can start to seed your thinking with, with data as a product. If you do have any other questions though, we'd love to hear from you. So please submit these in the comments section during our talk. And we'll either be able to respond in real time as it's playing out, or we'll follow up with you later on. So let's start with a little context to help frame the session. When we talk about becoming a modern data business, this is the kind of model that we're using. This could be a relatively young, but rapidly growing digital business or an established global brand. From a data perspective, we're just trying to simplify the core business domain and data flows to illustrate the opportunity to think differently with data. Each of the core domain areas is represented here, along with their data signals, the dotted lines uh, coming from each area, and then showing everything connecting together around this central data and intelligence function. The, the DNI function, data intelligence function, captures the signals in this data uh, to derive insights, drive outcomes, and then also feed these back into the network, allowing a collective view of data to inform every domain in the business. As all the data across the organization is available to drive uh, outcomes from every other domain, there are no silos. The top half of this shows what we're calling the front stage. So this is your customers, where they engage with your digital products through on, uh, omnichannel. Um, first party customer data can help increase customer spend and engagement. And then also understanding the interactions from your products can help digital experiences and reduce friction for customers. Then the backstage, if you like, so your, your, your employees and your core business operations. Uh, democratizing data across your organization can help drive decision-making and employee satisfaction. And digital twins of your operations, along with predictive intelligence, can deliver increased efficiency, profitability, and also drive your sustainability agenda. So the key point here is that data is generated and consumed everywhere, providing a unique and valuable signal that you can harness and use across all of these domains. So whilst this is a very simple model, it's actually an ideal state. Uh, and in many cases today, the level of data maturity that we see means that individual domains are leveraging data, of course, but it's typically in silos. And the connective tissue and the democratization that we're showing here doesn't exist or is at a low maturity. The organizational model that you need to support placing the right resources in these domains isn't optimal typically today. So there are many reasons for this, um, but it's predominantly because this is how data has been treated forever. But things are now changing and there is a, a genuine appetite out there to do this better. So at Ken and Carter, we're experts in product thinking and by applying this uh, model to data, you can completely change the way data is created, consumed, trusted, and ultimately democratized across your organization. So all the buzz in the industry at the moment around data mesh, really at, at the core, it's about product thinking. There is an architectural ideology as well, but what we're really interested in talking about today is this better way to organize yourselves around data. Problem is that most organizations aren't actually set up for this yet. Uh, there has to be a, a clear strategy to do it, a deliberate shift in thinking and a, a C-level mandate to make it happen. So it's only the top 5%, really, the digital natives that have had the benefit of starting from scratch that have got this kind of model working to, to any real degree. 
But any business that is, that's rapidly scaling can benefit from baking this kind of model in early. Um, but for a more larger and mature organization um, where the status quo has prevailed, it is, it is much more difficult to make this happen. But we want to give you some thoughts today on, on, on how you can start on that, that journey. So this is a very high level blueprint for that connected and productized approach to data. What is it that's really driving the change in the interest in the market? So here's what we're seeing. In our conversations with clients, we detect this tension between the potential energy locked up in data and the frustration of trying to create order around it so that it can be harnessed. As we've said, every company needs to become a data company. So really we're trying to fix decades of data challenges and failures, and that's gonna require a big mindset, mindset shift and, and deliberate action. When I started my career in data, everything was properly modeled, organized, documented, somebody owned it, somebody encouraged it to be used properly. You know, in fact, woe betide you if you didn't, uh, and you didn't know how to use the data and didn't go looking for how to, to use the data. So principally the reason things worked then was because we were in smaller teams, there was a domain context, and the whole problem was manageable enough you know, for the teams and people were empowered. But clearly it wasn't a technology thing that made that work because this was 30 or so years ago. So from my perspective, it kind of feels like data sort of lost its way um, in those intervening decades. Um, and, and no magical technology has, has come along um, to, to fix it. So it does come back to that sort of organizational issue and, and overall mindset. So we, we need, and we're looking for this scalable way of applying order today to existing data sets to sustainably harness its potential, but also in parallel have this modern approach so that the new things that we build around data have got the future in mind. The second signal out there is obviously this huge buzz and interest in data mesh. Everyone wants to know what it is, how to apply it. The data mesh just caught fire in the, in the last couple of years. And you know, frankly, it's done us all a huge favor by bringing some of these topics to the, to the table for this kind of conversation. And it's given us all pause for thought to, to really think about what this new order could, could be like around data. So whilst there is absolutely a, an architectural component to it, uh, we're putting that to one side here today and focusing on what we believe is 80% of the opportunity, and that is data as a product. The third thing to look at is the success of cloud native. So over the last decade, we learned how to manage this other incredibly complex thing, this modern software stack at scale. So domain-driven design, microservices, cross-functional teams, all of this can be applied to data. We already know how to do this for, for applications. So there are many parallels here that we see. Um, and you know, the cross-functional data product teams um, can be built to exist, exist in domains in the same way that we've already done this with the adoption of, of cloud native. So we strongly recommend also going away and looking at the parallels here for how we've solved that problem for the modern software stack and thinking about how that applies to data. The fourth thing is there is no technology fix. There is no shiny technology like data fabrics just going to come along, you install it globally, bang, job done. Uh, that has been part of the problem for the, for, for the last 30 years, this sort of expectation that a new technology is just going to come along and, and fix everything. Existing business processes have just been typically updated and using shiny tech. That's been the cycle that we're on. But we need to change that. And we need to start thinking less about the technology and more about how we're organizing ourselves. Um, and by the way, there is no tech yet that you just install and, and you know deploy a, a data mesh. Um, but undoubtedly some technology will, will, will emerge soon that will help enable that, that process. And finally, Ken and Carter, we've been using product thinking for years. So whenever we talk about this uh, application of it to, to data, um, we're very passionate. We understand how the mapping works. And we see, we see a lot of uh, interest from uh, C-level. Uh, the, the execs that are, are owning this, this problem in their organizations and looking for a, a new way to change the, this status quo. Some of the people we talked to are already doing it, um, but you know, overall, we, we definitely sense that this is the, the underlying agent of change uh, for data in, in the next decade. We also speak to analysts a lot, um, and, and they seem to agree with us that this kind of product thinking idea is really central and a, a powerful force for 
for data and it, it's time to get on and start using it. So let's just get into data as a product uh, a little bit. Um, how we can start introducing that to, to create this, this, this change agent, if you like. So on, the, on this slide, uh, the kind of status quo on the left, where we think we're going on the right, we're all familiar with data lakes and, and, and data warehouses, but how contemporary are these today, really? And what are their impediments? Well, it's a complicated discussion. We could spend the, the next two hours talking about data lakes and whether they're a good thing or not. Um, frankly, a perfectly workable solution. Um, but it's the fundamental notion of putting everything in one place that is, is the essence of this problem, you know, a dumping ground, um, data swamps. Data lakes were actually conceived to be much smaller than the way they are typically used today and how they've, they've kind of evolved. So putting a product lens, lens on data changes the game entirely. Um, you know, on the left-hand side, we're using this analogy here of water, um, an untrusted body of water um, compared with packaged product-based water products, if you like, on the right-hand side, which are easily discovered, consumed, uh, and, and traced. Um, the, the other analogy that I like to use is to, to think of over-the-counter medicine. So, you know, if data could be as easy to find and consume as, as over-the-counter medicines, trusted, documented, traceable, designed for a purpose, and most of us use them without having to go and consult an expert, that's the kind of shift in thinking that we're ultimately talking about here. The other thing just to get on the table is the language. So we do talk about data as a product, but you will also hear mention of data products. And both of these concepts kind of live together. So just for clarity, data as a product is about packaging and productizing the data and assets themselves, along with the related information and other assets you need to make them findable, usable, and trusted. So that might be through an API or some other directly addressable form sat in a lake or in cloud storage. Data products are the software, the apps, tools, pipelines, or machine learning models that can consume and process this data, perhaps then also creating new data, which itself can be fed back uh, and productized. So the whole thing becomes sort of cyclic and connected, if you like. You can think of the data supply and consumption uh, and all of the software sat in the middle uh, to, to serve to the endpoints. What's most important though, is that product thinking is applied, applied throughout. So whether it's just the data packaged as a product or the product or the software that process the data, everything is conceived and managed and built as a product. So with that background and just background and just setting the, the, the scene, I'll now hand over to Rob, who will unpack data as a product for us some more and talk about, about how to start thinking uh, about this journey. Thanks, Carl. What I'd like to do first is just talk about the size of the problem that we're seeing. Over the last two years alone, we've seen 90% of the world's data generated. And I was talking to Carl about this. And he kind of rightly brought me down to earth by telling me that over the last 20 years, that's been the case. We've been saying that again and again. Um, and that's quite amazing, you know, for, for almost half of my lifetime, we've, we've seen year on year exponential growth in data. And yet since the early 80s with the introduction of Kimball um, and we, we've seen new technology introduced, cloud, data lakes, NoSQL, GraphDB. But over all of that time, we've never really seen a shift in mindset of data. We haven't seen people start to actually think about data as a product and really start to think about how they can drive value from that data. So whilst we've seen a lot of technology innovation, we believe now is the time for people to actually start thinking differently. The graph here really shows that th this, this chasm between um, the, the value that we get from data and the data that we're producing, whilst it's growing exponentially and we have this tension in the middle um, of, of being not really knowing how to exploit that data. And what we're going to talk through here and what we believe data as a product does is just start to incrementally close that gap. It brings the value that we're releasing from data closer to the data that we're actually producing. Before I do that, though, um, Carl's already mentioned some of some of the big themes that we want to talk about. Um, we've mentioned data mesh and we've mentioned data as a product. 
we also have um data marketplace as, as a term that that we're see, seeing more and more of and i just wanted to talk a little bit about what those three things are so first of all carl's already touched on this with data as a product when, when i think about data as a product I, I i see i think about the people who produce data appreciating the lifetime value of that data and considering all of the um, use cases and potential that that data has and actually putting effort into investing in that data building products and making it accessible usable to people all around the organizations and, and that they work in data marketplace is actually about the creating the ability for people to find data so there's the it's great that people maybe we've built loads of great data products but if the people around the organization don't know that those data products exist how are we ever going to leverage the value from them so i like to think about amazon here and and thinking about all of the all of the products that amazon the billions of products that amazon sells and if 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 it wasn't for the actual website and the apps and the ability to go and search for those products it, it wouldn't matter how many products amazon had we wouldn't be able to buy them and and organizations need to start thinking about this when they produce data products how are they actually going to enable the people in their organizations to find those products reliably consistently and and with a great user experience wrapped around it as well Data Mesh actually incorporates data as a product and a data marketplace. Um, but when I start to think about Data Mesh, I think about the standards, having a standard set of standards across your organization for describing data products, uh, standard set of standards and tools for making those products available. Again, consistency is key here. People need to be able to uh, connect data products. They need to be able to switch between different products really easily. And, and the consistency of, of the way that those products are described and published and made available to people kind of data mesh brings all of this together with a mixture of technology, culture, processes, standards, and, and really enables us to kind of get that extra piece of value from the data products. So the next section I'm going to talk about is really about how to prepare for getting started with, with data mesh and data as a product. So we're going to talk through five different topics um, that, that just give you a little bit of insight about the things that you can start to think about when it, when it comes to these themes. What can you do straight after this call to actually go and start having some conversations with the people that you work with? And, and start thinking about how your organization can start making progress towards uh, data as a product or data mesh. Both of these things, as Carl already has mentioned, are, are not things that, you know, there is no um, drop in solution for these things. They're, they're, they're things that will take many years and, and possibly will never be finished, especially for enterprises that have big legacy estates. Um, you know, you can't just drop APIs over the top of a 15 20 year old system that's only capable of exporting data through csvs or spreadsheets so we need to be able to work around that um, and, and advance our thinking and our processes and technologies where we can but also accept the areas that we can't and and kind of build a system that enables us to work around all of those things the first thing i'd like to talk about is product thinking um carl's already touched on this in, in earlier on um but with immediate effect product thinking it doesn't require technology um it's 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 cultural it's about looking at uh, problem space and pulling people together to work out how we can solve that problem with data we could go away and, and think what are our top five data assets that we have in this organization are we actually leveraging the value from those assets do we trust those assets are, the, are those assets available to the people who need them? Have we actually ever sat around and done some um, idea sessions and workshops about how we can actually leverage the value of, of those assets in different parts of the organization? So these, this concept of, of product thinking, it's, it's really, it's just about having conversations. It's about, it's about inspiring people to come up with new ideas um, and, and then trying to, build a value case of how we can exploit that data. The next thing we can do is to start 
thinking about how we can build an experiment or, or build a, a minimum viable product, an MVP, to actually um, prove the concepts um, here. So we again, we, we don't want to go and try and create a big enterprise program where, where we try to apply this to hundreds of different data assets all at once. What we need to do is, is find an area where there's a high potential to be able to do this, where we've got highly motivated people. For me, that's probably in a one of your modern application development teams, a, a digital team, some, someone who is building something right now that is brand new using new tech, technologies, new coding languages, um, somewhere where we're innovating. Um, teams like that are, are going to quite quickly appreciate um, the idea of applying product thinking to data and 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 in my experience can get quite excited quite quickly about being able to drive additional value into the organization through the things that they're already working on. The other benefit of working with teams like this is they already have product managers embed them embedded within them. Um, they already have a lot of modern um, coding and programming techniques already in existence. So there's going to be a lot, lot less barriers to change. And if we can build useful data products out of these teams and then show how we can connect those products to data scientists, to data analysts, and um, to anyone who uses data and, and reduce the friction caused by the big centralized systems, then we'll start to be able to use that as a business case to, to expand into other areas that are maybe not as mature and, and not as digitally savvy. The next uh, topic for discussion is, is how do we actually distribute production of, of these um, data assets, of these data products? Um, big centralized systems are being quoted a, a lot as, as slowing us down, as grinding us to a halt. We, we, we've got thousands of data assets being pumped into data lakes with, with generally very small teams trying to process, process that data. These teams um, often lack the domain knowledge that is associated with uh, that data. Um, they're trying to fix issues that exist in that data that, that they um, don't know how those issues occurred and having to do a lot of back and forth and conversation with the teams that produce that data. If we think about Amazon in the early days, um, distributing books um, all, ar all around the world, could Amazon really have a distribute created such success if it insisted on having one single centralized distribution center. I mean, the, the scale of that now, it, it would probably be bigger than one of the world's biggest cities. And, and the concept of trying to get books in and out of that and distribute them to everybody in the world. Um, it's, it's unfathomable, really. It, 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 it's, it's very hard to, to grasp why anyone would, would think that such a thing could be useful. And in essence, that's what we've been doing with data for the last 20 years. We've been trying to centralize it, trying to um, put in central controls and, and then redistribute that data to the, to the people who need it. And it hasn't been working for a lot of us. And whilst it does give us better control and better quality in a lot of instances, and, and there's lots of um, examples all around the world of this, of this working very well, but it doesn't scale. Um, and just like the Amazon scenario, it, 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 it will crumble eventually. So the new way of thinking is to actually try to distribute the effort associated with creating data as the product or creating cleaning data, making data more useful, describing it, making it available and distributing that effort to the people who produce that data, um, the people who actually have more domain expertise um, and, and more ability to actually stop problems from occurring in the first place. As I've already talked about, the data marketplace is a, is a, is a way of centralizing the discovery of data. Um, and one thing we need to think about in organizations is how will we actually do that? And when you're first getting started, um, you know, we, we don't have to have a, a big, complex, fancy solution here, um, a simple wiki page uh, on whatever you're using for your wiki, whether that's con something like Confluence or SharePoint or e even just a shared Google Sheet or Microsoft Excel, to start with, it's just the concept of actually getting one place where you can find all of the data that you need. 
And if we only have a few products in there at the beginning, it doesn't need to be overly complex. But what it does need to be is consistent, very usable. We, we need that to be available to the widest number of people as possible. Um, we also, as, as we want to, as we build the complexity and add more products in, that's where we can start to explore how we build out the maturity of that marketplace. We could maybe start investing in a search capability or something similar to a, a e-commerce marketplace where we can search, we can have categories, we can have a really user friendly experience of finding, understanding and, and pulling our data together to where we need it to be. But the most important thing is to just start thinking about how we can do that and how we can get that into the hands of as many people as possible. The final point is a really important one. It's about how do we actually activate participation? So what I mean by that is how do we get people actually using the data? So we, we can build really great, great, great data products and we can distribute the effort of doing that so that we can create more and more and accelerate that that growth of data products and we can create a really beautiful easy to use marketplace that makes those data products easy to find but even with all of that um you know even the best products in the world require a little bit of marketing they require a bit of, of branding and a bit of effort being put in to actually make them desirable and to make people want to use them so it's important for you to start thinking within your organizations of how do we actually change the culture of, of within our organization and get people to want to use data. Thinking all the way from the top and actually leading by example, how do our, does our CEO talk about data when they're talking through the annual results or when the CEO is announcing a big shift in direction, um, maybe they're going to enter into a new market. If we can talk about how data was used to drive those decisions right from the very top of the organization, we can start to showcase the importance of data in some of the most fundamental and important decisions that the organization has to make. Taking that one step further, we can start to think about how employees are incentivized to use data. Um, can it be built into KPIs and OKRs? Um, it lends itself really well to OKRs and KPIs because both should be measurable and therefore both should have data um, feeding into them. And if one person is seeing the, the, the colleague next to them um, performing and exceeding all of their targets because they're using data, um, we need to help each other uh, understand how that data was used so we can all perform better with data and ultimately drive, drive a better performance across the whole organisation. So what we're seeing here is, is organizations investing in um, communication platforms, in brochures, in marketing, in flyers, in show and tells, in um, really focused training um, schemes that are not just for the data professionals, but for everybody in the organization. And, and, and that's really important is these, these products, they're not just for the data analysts and the data scientists. We're trying to create a, a shift in culture across the entire enterprise here. That will take a lot of effort. So just in closing, thanks for taking the time to join our session today. We'd love to hear about your experiences with data as a product, data products or, or data mesh. Uh, or if you'd like to know more about any of these subjects or any of the content that we, we've spoken about today, uh, please do get in touch uh, and we'll see you next time. Thanks again.